I love adding a little bit of text to some of my paintings and sketches. It can either just be a design element to fill up a bit of blank space, or it can explain the concept a bit more or bring a little bit of humour to the picture. You know, it can do lots of different things. And usually, because my handwriting isn't brilliant, I use little blocks and, and print. So when I heard about these, the idea of using letter punches to emboss into your painting, I was really intrigued. And that's what I want to show you now. Hello, my name is Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire. And every week I bring you a tip or trick that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's about how to add text to your watercolour paintings with the help of Hannah. Of course, you can add text in lots of different ways. You can handwrite it, you may have beautiful calligraphy, or you may be like me with rather scrappy writing, but I've deliberately blurred it all. This is a watercolour on canvas and actually I've embroidered this as well as done a little bit of printing and this is printed with blocks and it says to laugh is human but to moo is bovine which I thought was very funny. Or you can collage, I mean this is handwritten that I've cut out and, and stuck onto this so it looks like a label in a little museum. Um, but you could have typewritten text, you could cut bits out of magazines. So there's lots of options, but say today I want to look at using these letter punches. This isn't my original idea. I got this book, Watercolour with Mixed Media by Alison Board, and in it she goes through some ideas of text and it was in here that I saw it about using letter punches. So thank you, Alison. I really like the idea. This is a piece that I've done with embossed lettering. And I hope you can see, because it is behind glass, it's about to go off to an exhibition. The exhibition is all about 200 years of Huntley and Palmer being in Reading. That's the town I live near. They made biscuits and at one point, just employed the whole of Reading. That was back in Victorian times. And the piece is all different buildings that are still in Reading that are associated with Huntley and Palmer's. Oh, yeah, 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 that's okay. What, what can I do to, to bring more of this to it? So I used the lettering and embossed the background with names of their biscuits. So we have digestives, we have lemmingtons, don't know what those were. We've got Queen's Biscuits. Just to zoom in here, I hope you can see that we've got the starts of ginger here and then ice, iced biscuits and so forth. And I've just carried it on throughout the piece to, to add a little, little dimension that might not catch your eye first, but when you look closer, you think, what's that about? Oh, digestive, ginger. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So these are the punches. They're metal sticks and they're designed for actually punching into metal and say marking your postcode or, or your name on your bicycle or, or something like that. You can get them from tool shops. I got this, if you're in the UK, from Tool Station and they were, I think, about £14. You can get them off Amazon, you can get them on eBay. Just look for letter punches. You can also get ones for working leather, so you can get quite ornate ones, which are really beautiful. These are quite bog standard. Obviously, the more ornate they are, <laughs> the more they go up in price. And we need a hammer, a little pin hammer, or actually that's quite a big claw hammer. So that's all we need. And I'm just using an ordinary piece of watercolour paper. This watercolour paper is Bockingford, £140. You need to be careful what surface you work on. I've put a board down for when I'm filming so you can't see how mucky my workstation is. But if I tried to uh, put these indentations on top of this, it's foam board, I'm actually going to mark the board. Same if you're doing this on top of your dining room table, you're going to end up with letters all over it. So you need a hard surface that doesn't matter. Let's try a few things. We'll just grab a letter punch, the letter A, and we'll just do it on dry paper. 
you literally place the punch on the paper and give it a sharp tap with your hammer. You'll need to experiment on how hard you have to hit it. That was slightly softer. Definitely harder. Just look on the back though. That hard one does show on the back, but the other two hardly but show. It's not cutting all the way through the paper. Now I wonder if I dampen the paper, let that soak in a little, which will soften the fibres, I wonder if I'll get a slightly different mark. I'm thinking it might be a little bit softer. You do need to make sure that your letter punch isn't rusty or have any oil or stuff like that on if they're brand new. Yeah, definitely gives a slightly softer mark. So you might want that. Obviously, it's your, your preference. Now, I wonder what would happen if instead of on clean paper, we put a little wash. Not a lot different from what you would expect. It slightly seems to repel the watercolour away from the, uh, the letter, so it is pale around the letter. And what will happen if we put the wash on after? That wasn't a particularly deep one. Let's do two. I do like hitting things with hammers. Now, if I put the wash on, this, I think, is the fun bit, because can you see that the wash sinks into the letter and shows it up a lot more. The final thing I want to try is what can we do if you do it wrong? Because it's very easy to get letters round the wrong way. I wonder if you can burnish it out. And that was a suggestion in Alison's book. So just using the back of a clean spoon, can you soften off that mistake? And I don't think you can, to be honest. It, mm, this has actually softened off the, the texture of the watercolour paper. I mean, it's slightly lighter. Let's try from the back as well and see if that helps. Oh, it's still very visible. I think if I made a mistake like that, that I needed to correct, I might soften it with some water, let that soak in, make sure I've got it up the right way this time, and actually try and disguise it. And though you can see a little bit of the first letter under there, I don't think that's bad. So for me, burnishing doesn't really work that well. Maybe on a softer paper it might be more successful. The question is, is it the end of the world if you make a mistake? Look here, T, and I've put the E backwards, and it was a mistake. Actually, I think you'd need to look really closely to see that mistake. Would it affect your enjoyment of the entire thing? And do you know what? If someone does spot that and says, I shall say I'm channeling my, my inner Amish approach. When they make their gorgeous quilts, they always deliberately put a mistake into them because nothing in the world is perfect. So there you go. Nothing in my painting is perfect either. So how easy is that? You can mark into dry or damp paper. And I really liked adding the wash afterwards to make the letters stand out a little bit more. I love adding words and lettering to my, my work. I love hitting things with a hammer. So this process makes me really happy.